Okay, here we are. I'm going to show you the future. Everything you dreamt of when you really wanted broadband on the move, LTE. It's thanks for long-term evolution, nothing to do from monkeys to human beings. LTE, long-term evolution. Why a name like that? I think because uh, LTE brought OFDMA okay. into the wireless domain, and perhaps you know that is the basis of calling it long-term <laughs> evolution, or perhaps it's just an engineering term. Yeah, or maybe we'll just stick to LTE. Yes. I really don't want people to go around saying, "Have you got long-term evolution on your phone?" So that's correct. <laughs> LTE sounds a little better. Sounds so better. what we're going to do today is that you actually have LTE deployed in the city as a special service right now. This van is LTE enabled. That is correct. So it's a slightly larger device than the one we'll carry around, mm -hmm. but this van will show us LTE, right? That is correct. Okay, I can't wait for this. Let's take a look. LTE actually working. Oh, that's correct. Okay, so very high-tech van. Huh? We should do more than just have a chat out here. What are you doing later in the evening? <laughs> <laughs> this is the party van. That right? is a good van, yes. Yeah. Hi, how are you doing? So good. Are we going to get some interesting demos of Supreme High Speed finally brought band on the move from them, right? That is correct. Okay, let's find out what. It, so, what are we going to see today? So, what we're going to see is a mobile LTE demonstration, okay. which means that we have set up about a three-kilometer area that is covered by LTE okay. and this van is receiving the LTE signal okay. and we're going to run two high definition uh, channels on these televisions okay. over LTE while this van moves mm -hmm. and while it works in a mobile environment. So, so in effect this little van right now is what our LTE world will be eventually. So this is LTE right now constrained to a van but then it will be cities and countries in the world that more or less will be working the same way, right? That is correct. Okay, now, now explain this to me. A lot of people get very confused, and let's do this in the simplest terms possible. There are too many alphabet soups in this entire TDD, LTE, and then you have HSDP and this and that, HSPA, and all of these things. What are we basically saying? What is LTE? LTE is actually the next step from 3G, and it works in concert with 3G. So a 3G phone of the future would have both modes, LTE as well as 3G, and to a consumer, it will be seamless going between the two. So this whole thing where people say LTE is 4G, okay, is again an urban legend in a bit because there are no real standards for 4G, right? Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't call LTE 4G, right? You know, those are marketing terms. <laughs> people try to get right. some market advantage. I think the biggest thing is LTE-enabled 3G phones will work on both LTE and on 3G, so there's no seamless, uh, no difference between the two. But 4G, 3G, 5G, those are ways <laughs> oh, to compete are we in the market. 5G <laughs> well, some people do talk about 5G. But remember, that's theoretical. We're not really going to be able to give each customer, each consumer, that level, right? That is correct. So 20 megahertz, you can do 80 megabits per second. Today, what we're going to show is 10 megahertz. Okay. That's 40 so megabits 40 per second. Megahertz. That 40 megabits per second gets divided amongst multiple users. users. Yeah. So clearly, by layering it on top of 3G, uh, when the networks are completely loaded, you will have a very good experience. But peak speeds are just a measure of capacity, yeah. uh, and, not, it's, yeah. and it's divided up amongst the users. Yeah, but, but, but we do hear that uh, wherever there has been deployment of this, Two to four Mbps is what most customers should expect. So that's that, what that right? the, that's what the average speed is. It, it so you know, after about a megabit, you can't tell the difference. Okay, time for us to really get your dreams and all your aspirations get going. Here's demonstration time. We're going to show you what you will be capable of with LTE, 3G, and everything else on your mobile phone and your devices in your house. Absolutely blazing internet broadband on the move speed. Here's a quick look of how Swift LTE could be. Inside the van, we see a demonstration of live streamed multiple high definition video feeds showing a seamless handoff between base stations from one in red to one in green while maintaining session continuity. The demonstration is carried out by using Radio Access Network and evolved packet core solutions from Ericsson and USB dongles based on Qualcomm's chipset that supports both LTE and 3G. 
We demoed live streaming on YouTube too with LTE and to our surprise within seconds we got our video and that too with a high resolution of 720 pixels. Amazing! What more? The van stopped at a point where we could get the highest speed which did touch, may I say, just about 40 Mbps. However, the regular LTE consumer might get speeds between 4 Mbps to 10 Mbps which is also not bad. So, uh, after this mobility milestone, um, 3G networks, as you know, are coming up by March of next year. Most cities, from most operators, would be covered. Uh, and we will then trial demonstrate the interoperability of LTE with 3G. And at that point, chipsets and network equipment will go commercial. Second half of 2011, uh, modulo operator speed in the market we should be ready to launch. I think if you put the requirements that we put on it, that you don't want to set up something separate, you want to layer it on top of 3G, you want to have a mobile experience, you want to have an experience where you don't, it doesn't really matter whether 3G is serving you or LTE is serving you. I think from those requirements point of view, uh, YMAX really doesn't cut the snuff and we're not aware of anybody working with that technology.